Your scholars are fooling you, deceiving you, taking your monies. Wallahi, lying to you, putting Arabism in you. Look, Africans, you have your culture. Arabians, they have their culture. Americans, they have their culture. Europeans, they have their culture. Stop fooling yourself and taking on somebody's culture upon your culture. This is why most of the time when you watch my lectures, how do I appear? You see me wearing my African attire with my African necklace. I don't give a damn what your Arabic scholar thinks. Yeah, peace be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you all once again for coming to witness this program. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't do this program last uh, Tuesday because due to me losing a close friend of mine, a dear friend, uh, Mehdi Belabas is a Moroccan, but he's a good friend from, uh, of mine, uh, who used to also come to me and we study together, right? So I lost him. He, he died. He passed away. <clears throat> so he was buried on Tuesday last week. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. So on that day, he, he, we went for burial. So unfortunately, I couldn't do uh, my program. But here we go again. God giving us health and better, you know, <clears throat> health and everything we are here again salam peace be upon you all thank you all for coming zach jim i see you uh richie kwami tando kg dawood baba sedu rock silva uh yeah thank you all for coming uh joshua elijah Exactly right. You are on point. Uh, Joshua, Elijah, you can check chapter 41, verse 6 of the Quran. Chapter 41, verse 6. Uh -huh. The reason why I call the sectarians mushriks is there. You see it there. I have the right to call them as such. You know. So thank you very much, Joshua. Alam Shah, I see you. Salam. Eliman, Imran, and Aganka. Salam. I see you. Hey, Chris, Christian Marchine, I see you. Peace. Thank you. Uh, Thomas Obeng, I see you. You're welcome. Uh, so, now, the, the, the Mushriks claim they are refuting my arguments. Uh, it's just like asking somebody one plus one and they say the answer is three. Of course, if there's somebody says the answer is three, they have answered the question. But is it correct or is it wrong? That is the issue here. So if I ask a question, I say one plus one, and you rush and say no, three, one plus one is called to three, of course, you've answered the question. But the answer is wrong. So the sectarians don't know what I'm, the, the game I'm playing with their conscious because I know they are ignorant. I know. Not, don't be surprised, they are even their scholars cannot match face me. I know how ignorant they are, and their scholars know that I know they are ignorant. So, what the, the game, the uh, delaying tactics that scholars have to do is to tell their followers, Don't mind him, he's crazy, he's a madman. Don't mind him, he's crazy, he's a madman. Don't mind him. And as you can see, ignorant people also, when they are leaders, because they are puppets, uh, they are like slaves for their leaders. When their leaders tell them something, they take it up upon themselves. You understand? Uh, salam, Muktabu is saying, uh, Sheikh Taufik, I see you. I see you all. Salam. <clears throat> so they, they, they refuse to understand uh, where, I'm where I'm coming from and not, not, never, nevertheless to talk about where I'm going. They don't know my direction. So most of them will tag me as Qurani Yun. Uh, like meaning in English, we say Quranist. You understand? Qurani Yun. And the moment you tag somebody as Qurani Yun, you're trying to create a different sect for him, right? Which is wrong according to the Quran. There is no such thing as Qurani Yun. It doesn't exist in the Quran. So if there should be the tag, the name tag Qurani Yun, Prophet Muhammad should have been the first to be tagged as Qurani Yun, right? He should be the first leader of that group. So there is no such thing like that. Quran chapter 27 verse 91. It says the prophet said, an al and I have been commanded to be of the Muslims. Right? Quran chapter 27 verse 91. He has been commanded to be of the Muslims. So if he has been commanded to be of the Muslims and he put only the Quran as a source of guidance, can we classify him as Quraniyun? 
The answer is no. You see? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, salam, Jimmy. Nagan Kasalis. <coughs> salam. Uh, Alaja Atel Mahmoud. Salam Alaik. Uh, YSG. Salam. Salam, bro. Okay, for now, let me focus on the, the program so that I don't get uh, my, my attention distracted so that I can break things down for people to, to comprehend the message I have for them today. Uh, let me let me check my messages before. <clears throat> Nadira, kuna kuwa, kuna kuwa, please. Salim, kuna kuwa. Kuya mkuribansu mkuwa na. Uh, Moktabu Luisani says, will you please elaborate the word Muslim, bro? Uh, Muslim, it comes from the word Salima. Or we say Salama. Now, this Muslim is somebody who has been in taslim right to submit himself to surrender himself to to god so when you submit yourself to god you become a muslim now a muslim is found in the deen in the religion called islam al islam chapter 3 verse 19 god says in the deen in the light islam right so al islam does not mean a man-made religion it means your willfully submission to the maker the creator that is what makes you a muslim so when we say somebody is a Muslim, it doesn't necessarily mean the mainstream Muslims like Sunni, Shia, Tijaniya, Ahmadiyya, Qadiriya, whatever, whatever, they are, they, are, they, are, they are all mushriks. Yes, because those names they formulated for themselves are not coming from God, but instead coming from somebody else. You understand? If you ask them, did Prophet Muhammad created a, a religion called Ali Sunnah? They don't have it. No. Shia? No. Sunni, uh, Tijaniya? No. So they formulated all these things to tag themselves names. So you see somebody calling himself Sunni Muslim, Tijaniya Muslim, Shia Muslim. That is shirk. The word shirk means to associate something with something which you don't have a, a permission to do. Right? So Quran chapter 7 verse 33. It is haram. Chapter 7 verse 33. It is haram for you to do that right uh -huh. so a muslim is somebody who has submitted himself to god that is what a muslim so when god asked abraham chapter 2 verse 131 when god told him aslim then he said what aslam tu li rabbil alami i submit to the lord of the world so this aslim he has been asked to submit then he says aslam tu you see the salama there eh? or salima so he submitted himself to God. So that is what makes you a Muslim. So Abraham, according to chapter 3, verse 67, he was a Muslim, right? Uh -huh. uh, concerning, <clears throat> let me share the screen again. Yeah, I shared the, this hadith concerning the hadith he used. They said, uh, they said anybody claiming to follow the Quran alone for guidance is hadith yun, can be tagged as, uh, sorry, Quran yun, meaning a Quranist, somebody who follows the Quran alone, right? Now, according to their own hadith books, uh, Sahih al Bukhari 5669. Sahih al-Bukhari 5669. That's a reference there, down there. So whoever is watching can write it down. You, you check it for yourself later. And it is classified as Sahih al-Bukhari, right? In that hadith, narrated by Ibn Abbas, right? Narrated by Ibn Abbas. He says, when Allah's messenger was on his deathbed, that is deathbed, and in the house, there were some people among whom was Umar bin Akhtar. They say Umar was part of this group. Then they said, the prophet said, come, let me write for you a writing <clears throat> after which you will not go astray, right? Umar said, the prophet 
is seriously ill and you have the Quran, so the book of God is enough for you, meaning it's sufficient for you. So according to the hadith, this is what uh, Umar said. Yeah. Salam, uh, brother Isa Wasim. Uh -huh. So the hadith says the prophet is seriously ill and you have the Quran, so the book of God is enough for us. So if that is the case, Umar said it at the time of the prophet, meaning the Quran was completed. It was complete book because it says the prophet was hit on his deathbed. I don't believe in this hadith, but in case you believe in it, write it down. Ask your scholars this question. How come the prophet is seriously ill and you have the Quran? According to Umar, you have the Quran, which is a definite article, means it's completed, it's there. So then Umar went ahead to say that so the book of Allah, which is God, is enough for us. Meaning, if you will tag me as a Quranist or say that, oh, why is Baba Shraib telling people to follow the Quran alone? Did he start from me? You, the hypocrite, the sectarians, you claim Khuluku Quran, that the prophet, his character, everything was the Quran. He never followed any other book. So can I call him a Quranist as well? The answer is no. He was a Muslim. I'm a Muslim as well. Quran chapter 27 verse 91. I've been commanded to be of the Muslims and I'm a Muslim. But you, the Mushriks, like to tag us, the Quranists, right? No problem. So let's assume we accept the name. But did it start from us? We can clearly see in your own Sahih Bukhari Hadith. It was what? Umar who started this, <laughs> this thing. He told the people that the prophet is seriously ill and you have the Quran, meaning they have the Quran with them. He never said you have the Quran and Sunnah. You have the Quran and Hadith. <laughs> he never said that. So then he says, so the book of Allah is enough for us. It's sufficient. What else do you need? Unless you are a dumb person, very, very dumb and stupid to think. You need Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Jamia Tirmidhi, Awud, Surah Ibn Nisa, all these garbages before you can follow Islam. <laughs> so your own hadith is saying Umar, uh, Umar bin Al-Akhtab, he says the Quran is enough. He says the book of God is enough. So what? why do you have a problem with Baba Shraib if I say Quran is enough for guidance? What is your problem? Oh, tell us, how will you do your salat? Well, I do salat. How will you give the zakat? Yes, I give zakat. So now what is the issue here? Now, let, let me drop this because I've stayed on this for a long time. So let me, let me drop this part and I go to the next point. Now, the next point is what they need to understand is I'm, I'm not somebody you call a Quran you No. I will be laughing at you if you classify me as a Quranist. I'm a Muslim who happens to follow the Quran for guidance. That is me, Shraib Abdullah, or Baba Shraib. Number two, the Mushriks, they said, me, Baba Shraib, I'm the enemy of Islam. That's how they classify me, especially some of the Ghanaian preachers and scholars. I don't call them scholars. They don't even have a scholar in Ghana. Now, these preachers in Ghana claim that I'm the enemy of Islam. Let them bring me one of my video, one video of me where I'm castigating Islam. Unless I'm castigating you, the Mushriks, the Sunni, the Shia, the Tijaniya, the Ahmadi, you are all Mushriks. You are not Muslims. If you are a Muslim, find me. I say dialogue or call right now. Open my phone line. Call. Prove to me where God says you should become a Sunni, Shia, Tariqa, Tijaniya, Ahmadiyya, or whatever you have. That's all I said. But it's a big deal for them. You see. Uh -huh. Then again, you classifying me as the enemy of Islam. I don't get it. How does it make, it make you feel <laughs> that Baba Shrein is the enemy of Islam? Does it make sense to you yourself speaking that word? Or is it that you fail to disprove me and refute my arguments? So now you have to get the people, the masses, to hate me. Pepa emu, jahilin chiku inde matukan di kaikina. The wa wan chi malum man nanya wan chinsu. Kariyaza ku yuma mutani yenzu, kuche we baba shwaib nazagin an nabi, e nazagin adini. What? 
Is that what you tell the people now? Just for the people to hate me? For what? Just because you cannot stand my arguments? Look, this is why I always call for a respectful dialogue. For anybody, anybody out there, if you think I'm lying, if you think I'm deceiving the people, I didn't ask for a bigger deal. I said, find me for a live dialogue. We can sit down. Look, if it is the issue about the Salat, if it's the issue about Zakat, if it's the issue about Hajj, if it's the issue about Siam, I said, find me. We sit down. We go boot for boots, word for word. We check it. You bring your source. I bring my source. You don't have a source. We don't have a match. <laughs> because if you don't have a source of your statement, who should we? what should I take? Your words? <laughs> You understand? We are following God's words. So it's either God tells us what it is or we don't speak about it at all. So if you have to base your evidence from Sahih Bukhari, some garbages to make your point, then we are still in the circle. Because why do I need your scholar to tell me what the Quran says? Somebody will say, okay, Babu Shab, you are also telling people, I'm only telling people what God says. Then I throw the challenge. I said, if anybody say I'm lying, I'm here. Somebody will say, oh, we don't need to argue with Islam. It doesn't have, are you a fool? Go and check Abraham. He argued with his, with his people. He had argument with his people. You said there's no challenge in Islam? Go and check the story of Moses. He had a challenge with Pharaoh and his magicians. You said there's no argument with somebody who is superior or inferior than you? Go and check chapter 2, verse 258. Abraham had an argument with a king. You have such dialogues and debates and arguments in order to come to the conclusion of truth. You don't stay in your one-sided corner and accuse somebody of doing something falsely or saying somebody's wrong. No. Come. Face the person. <laughs> you understand? This is how you get the truth. So that audience, the people, can benefit from this wisdom and knowledge. You see how it feels? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Peace, uh, Nazir Enesi. Now, so these people, what I the, the only thing I wanted to do to let you reason is remember the Christians, most of the Christians were worshiping Jesus before Prophet Muhammad came. Right? And ever since Prophet Muhammad came, they never they never stopped worshiping Jesus. They still worship Jesus, but nowhere did Jesus said, I am God or worship me, right? But they are worshiping Jesus because of their own doctrines and understandings to certain uh, texts. But they've been doing that now for over 2,000 years. The Gregorian calendar we are using is before the birth of Christ, right? We are still using it, right? The Christians, most of them are still worshipping Jesus. When I say most of them, because not all of them are worshipping Jesus. Some people don't believe in the concept of Jesus being to be worshipped. But then, that is the case... They've been doing that for over 2,000 years. Does that make it right? The answer is no. So now we have people saying, who are you, Baba Shreve, to come and tell us that uh, we have been practicing Islam. We've been praying five times. We've been following the Hadith since even your great-great-grandfathers were born. Who are you to come now in this generation and tell us that what we are doing is wrong? <laughs> so does that mean, since the Christians were worshipping Jesus for over 2,000 years, does that mean it's right just because of the longevity uh, the longevity they have been doing it. Does that mean it's right? Just because it's over 2,000 years, they keep worshipping Jesus. Does that make it right? So Quran chapter 6 verse 116 says, If you obey most of those on earth, they will mislead you from the way of God. They only follow what? Assumption. And they are only guessing. When people are guessing, they don't have proof. When people are assuming, they don't have proof. When you obey people, you'll be a stupid person. Salam. Fatikaba. That is why Quran chapter 17 verse 36 clearly tells you. Quran chapter 17 verse 36 clearly tells you. Quran chapter 17 verse 36 so let me share the screen so that you see the verse clearly what God is saying. God is telling you and I, Right? Chapter 17, uh, here, chapter 
And that's God telling you that. Huh? You see? It says, Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. Yeah? Then he says, Inna sama'a wal basara wal fu'ad kullu ula'ika kena anhu mas'ula. He says, and do not pursue, when we say pursue, takafu, do not pursue, like to participate as an activity, to be part of something, to do something by following whatever is being done, to pursue. Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. And this command says, ma alayhi laka, it started with the prophet himself, alayhi salam. Because whenever there's a legislation, he is not the legislator, God is the legislator. Quran chapter 18, verse 26, he does not associate anyone in his what? Judgment. So God gives the legislation and he does the judging, right? So God says, Then he says, indeed, the hearing, in the summer, that the seeing, that is the sight. Well, for art, that is the mind. Some people can say the heart, but that is not the organ, right? That is just the sense of feeling, right? The mind, all those, all those huh, will be accountable there. So God gave you all these things for a reason. Use it wisely. Your hearing, your eyesight, and your mind, use it wisely. You, you need to scrutinize things, check things, question, ask questions, relevant questions to benefit you. There's something we call relevance speech, relevance of speech or relevant speech, or relevant of an information, or relevance of information, right? Always focus on what is relevant and leave the irrelevance aside. What God says, do it. What he doesn't say, put it that way. Now, so when you are dealing with people, the difficult majorities, whatever God says, people want to put meaning into it to change things as it is, right? So let's say God told the people of uh, Musa to slaughter a cow. Then people will start putting in meaning, trying to say which type of cow, a big one, small one, old, young, fat, which type, what color, what this. So this is where people will try to formulate their own meanings, putting things, putting words out of context, right? So to simplify this, just because the Christians were worshipping Jesus for over 2,000 years, the longevity doesn't necessarily mean they are right. You understand? When you go to the Bible, Mark chapter 12, verse 29, and read, you read from to verse 31, it tells you clearly who Jesus told the children of Israel God is. Right? That God is one. And you have to love him with all your heart, thy mind, thy soul, and everything to the God right but then as time goes on people start to indoctrinate themselves with other doctrines and it changes every concept that they have now insulting the prophet the mainstream muslims are telling people that i baba shrive i'm insulting the prophet i challenge them i dare them to bring me one of my video where i was insulting the prophet other than differentiating to tell you the prophet of the hadith is different from the prophet of the quran the prophet of the Hadith is a pedophile. Yes, I said it. And I'll say it again. The prophet of the Quran is not. You'll be a fool to sit down again on your podium or whatever platform to say Baba Shrive is insulting the prophet. You are the dumbest fool ever to do that. I'm serious. I don't care whether you are a scholar, you are a Sunni, you are a preacher. And may the curse of God be upon you for lying against me. Wallahi lazim. You've been concealing the truth away from the people. God says this in Quran chapter 2, verse 159. Chapter 2, verse 
Quran says inna allazina yaktumuna ma anzalna min al-bayyinat wal huda min ba'di ma bayyannahu lin-nas fil kitab ulaika yal'anuhullah wa yal'anuhum la'inun You see what God says I share the screen so that you see clearly what God is saying God says inna allazina yaktumuna ma anzalna min al-bayyinat wal huda min ba'di ma bayyannahu lin-nas fil kitab ulaika yal'anuhullah wa yal'anuhum la'inun then god went further to say illa allazina tabu wa aslahu ha wa bayyanu fa ulaika atubu alayhim then he says wa ana tawwabur rahim so god says indeed those who conceal what has been what what we have revealed of the god evidences that is a clear evidences and the what and the guidance after that which we have made it clear to the people in the book because god has made it clear the book he made it clear to the people but people especially scholars who know the book is clear they are concealing it and hiding it from the people and lying to the people and saying something else so god says those are the ones whom god has cursed and they are cursed by the curses as well Then verse 160 says illa allazina tabu except those who repent wa aslahu and reform wa bayyanu and then what to manifest something to what to reveal it to what to make it known just like Quran chapter 3 verse 187 concerning the mithaq God took with the children of Israel as well to make the book known not to hide anything from the book bring it out If God says something bring it out just like the way I keep doing Baba Shrive that's what I do I bring it out whenever something is said in the Quran I bring it out to the people Then God says for ulaika atubu alayhim and those are the ones God will forgive them he will pardon them Wa ana tawwabu rahim and I am the what God is the what uh, the one who accepts repentance he is the what uh, merciful or we can say he is the what uh the one who accepts repentance right rahim as well is merciful now when i take you back to people who claim i'm insulting the prophet i dare them i throw one challenge to them i dare them to bring one of my video where i'm insulting the prophet of the quran where i said something bad about the prophet of the quran i dare them Yes, uh Isa Watson, what you said is right. The the Christ, uh, the Muslims are guilty as well of what Christians are doing concerning Jesus. Yes. Uh thank you very much uh Swali Swali Abdul Rahman, I appreciate that. God bless you too. You see. So now people claim I'm insulting people. This is what people majority of the people are saying. They say Baba Shrib this guy is rude, is harsh, is what is offensive, he's insulting people. Really? Am I insulting people? Really? <laughs> wow, I never knew I was insulting people other than describing people. I don't insult people. I only describe what they do. Right? Somebody who works on the farm is called a farmer. Somebody who scams people is called a scammer. Somebody who rapes is called a rapist. Somebody who steals or what? Go for robbery is called what? A thief. What about somebody who does shirk? Is called a mushrik. What about somebody who does who is a hypocrite? Who does hypocrisy? Is a called munafik, a hypocrite. I dare anybody to bring me one video where I would just put somebody and insult him without any reason without showing any evidence concerning why I call him such a name. I dare anybody bring me a video of mine or bring me a statement of mine that I insulted somebody without showing you how stupid the person is. I don't insult people. God tells us clearly in the Quran wala tanabazu bil alqab he says we should not insult people by their nicknames so the the word insult he didn't say don't call people by their nickname he said don't insult people so let's say baba shrine i'm not crazy i'm not mad what do you see the sectarians doing 
They are calling me mad. Now, that is what we call insult. I'm not crazy. They are calling me crazy. That is what we call insult. But when I'm describing something, this is the glass. And I ask you, go and put water for me to drink. And then you go and put what? Toilet or urine or trash in this. And you bring it. And I call you a fool. It's not an insult. Because it's a foolish act you just did. Who is a fool? Somebody who likes good judgment. <laughs> because if you have good judgment, if I ask for water, why will you go and give me trash or something else? I ask for water. Do you get my point? So when you bring me that trash and I call you a fool, it's not an insult. <laughs> I'm describing what you just did. <laughs> so I'm, giving, I'm going to give you an example. If it is bad, you should blame the prophet and blame the Quran. Because whatever, whatever thing you think I'm insulting you, I get it from the Quran. But that is the book of guidance for me. So I'm going to help the audience to understand where I get all these things from. I'm never insulting anybody. If you are a Mushrik, I'll tell you. Just like I tell the Sunnis, the Tijaniya, the Ahmad, if you are, because the Prophet was not an Ali Sunni. He was not a Shia. He was not a Tijaniya. So if you are, you are a Mushrik. Where is the insult there? So what am I supposed to call you? Tell me. Or you don't understand the meaning of Mushrik. And your scholars are running away from me like Farrat min Kaswara, like the 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 donkeys have seen the lions and they are running away from lion. Huh? You are so stressed up sitting in the mosque and your platforms talking about me and you claim people should ignore me. Seriously. Or it's just that you cannot stand me. <laughs> I'm giving you pressure. Eh? <laughs> Tell the people the truth. Wallahi, if you use the scholars who start telling the people the truth, I can resign. I can even stop doing videos and stay home with my kids, lovely kids, and enjoy my life. You think, you think, <laughs> you think, well, I want to stress myself because of you, some of the damn scholars out there? Seriously. So I'm going to show you the evidence that it's not an insult. It's a description of the act of people, what they do. So, for instance, if I take you to Quran chapter 7, verse 155, somebody should help me write the verses below the page so that people can check it out. Quran chapter 7, verse 155, that is Suratul Al-Araf, you go to 155, and I'm going to show you something interesting from the verse. Then we, you and I would judge and to see whether Moses, Musa, alayhi salam, did he insult the people? Was it an insult? Or was it a description of the people's conduct? Right? So audience, you are going to help me out with this. And tell me whether Moses insulted them or was it a description of the people's character and habit? So help me out on this. Right? So chapter 7, verse 155. Write it down for anybody who, who is willing to know the truth. And you check it for yourself and you see what I'm doing. Right? So I'm sharing the screen. Let me share the screen and let's see what it says, right? Good. I put it here. Oh. What is wrong with this? Okay. No problem. I share the screen and I put open this here. Yeah. So Quran chapter 7, verse 155. I hope you are seeing what I'm seeing. I don't know if it's open up for you there. If you can see what I'm seeing, let me maximize it so that you see it clear enough. Chapter 7, verse 155. Uh, I don't know if it's big enough for you to see. Chapter 7, verse 155. <clears throat> okay, let's see if you can see it clear enough. Okay, I don't know. This, this, this is getting out of hand. It's getting slow. 
Okay, no problem. But for people who have that verse, huh? I'm going to read it out so that you get to know what the verse says, right? Then that will be easier other than me trying to. So when God, when Moses uh, selected 70 men from his people for our appointed time, a, a meeting with God, right? And when the tremor sees them, he, Moses said, Lord, if you had willed, you could have annihilated them earlier together with me, Iyaya. Will you annihilate us for what the foolish among us have done? This is what Musa alayhi salam was telling God. Will you annihilate us for what the foolish among us have done? It is only your trial by which you send whomever you will astray and guide whomever you will. You are our guardian, so forgive us and have mercy upon us, for you are the best of what? Forgive us. So in Arabic, it says, hmm? it says, Atu, huh? Atu likuna, Atu likuna, Bima fa'ala sufa'ahu minna. He's asking God question. Will you annihilate us? Bima fa'ala sufa'ahu. For what the foolish among us have done? Is it an insult? Was Moses insulting anybody? Or other than these people acted foolish? What foolish thing did they do? They took the calf. You took a golden calf. And you are worshipping it and you are saying this is your God. <laughs> Husband Allah on you They took a calf. And they are saying the calf is their God. For those who don't know this history concerning Moses and his people when they worship the golden calf. Check Quran chapter 7 start reading from 135 downwards. You get the history there. They were worshipping the calf. So now Moses describing the act, what they did, he said, he's telling God, will you annihilate us for what the foolish among us have done? So what mistake does me, did me, uh, does me, Baba Shaib do? When you are associating Sahih Bukhari with the religion of God or the book of God, he hasn't given you permission. And I call you foolish. You say I'm insulting you? No, tell me, the thing you are doing, is it a wise thing? Moses clearly called his people by saying, telling God, will you annihilate us for the foolish among us have done? Is that an insult? So if it is, then tell Moses he has insulted the people, right? It's not an insult. It's a description of what they have done. If they are stupid, tell them they have done. They are stupid, and I'm going to prove that to you. It's not an insult. I never insult people. Why would I insult you? What have you done to me? You acted foolish. I have to tell you, you are a fool. I'm not insulting you. I'm telling you what you did. You see, that is Quran chapter seven, verse one hundred and fifty-five. So the next verse I'm going to show you can be found in Quran chapter 2 verse 130. That is Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 130. And I'm going to show you again what God says in the Quran. He says, وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ أَنْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِهَ نَفْسَهُ Who will desire other than the creed of Abraham if not one who fools himself? And who will desire other than the creed of Abraham, if not one who fools himself? So now if I see you desiring a creed other than the creed of Abraham, which the Ali Sunnah say, they say their creed is different. They say their creed is Ali Sunnah. So tell me, God says, who will desire other than the creed of Abraham, if not one who fools himself? So automatically, if you call Ali Sun yourself Ali Sunni, are you a wise person? Automatically, you are a fool. I'm not saying it. It's the Quran, not me. Wallahi. If you say you are following the Akida of Ali Sunnah, according to God, you are a fool. You are fooling yourself. 
<laughs> because the wise thing is to follow the middle of Ibrahim, the creed of Abraham. That's what God wants you to follow. Prophet Muhammad himself, that is the creed he follows. Quran chapter 6, verse 161. Kul inna ni hadani rabbi ila siratin mustaqib. Dinan kiyama millata Ibrahima hanifa uma kena minal mushriki. Abraham was not of the mushriks. And Muhammad alayhi salam followed his footsteps. So you are fooling yourself saying you are following al sunnah. Tariqa to tijaniya. Shia. Ahmadiyya. Whatever, whatever. Iya, iya. Salafiya. Wahhabiya. Sufiya. Keep fooling yourselves and going like that. You say I'm insulting you. Come and sit down for a live dialogue and see the embarrassment I'll hand it over to you. I told you, none of your scholars in Ghana can face me face to face. Wallahi lazim. I'm not bragging. I'm not boasting. You might think I'm joking. You don't know till I get one of your scholars face to face. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi. Wallahi. <laughs> no wonder they are scared. Uh, no wonder all your scholars are scared of me. Let them try. <laughs> hey. hmm. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, Brother Isa Watson, I appreciate that. <clears throat> Thank you, I appreciate that. Yes, inshallah, we keep uh, this thing going. The charity will try to find out a ways of means to help, right? Uh -huh. So then uh, I think uh, a time coming, I'll just have to put uh, Brother Isa Watson's number here so that people who want to donate to be able to help feed uh, people in South Africa who are struggling, who don't have, who are homeless, who don't have chance to get food to eat, you can support the donation and then we see what we can do, inshallah. So I'll, I'll create something up, put the notification here, and people can sponsor uh, the feeding scheme also, uh, which I used to do myself in Ghana every six months, but uh, this year so far I haven't done it. I usually feed, feed old people through the help of the, some of the donations I receive. And I'll try to do that as time goes on. Uh, Salam, Biggie. Good evening. You're welcome. Abu Bakar, Mohammed, Jan, thank you. We, I believe you guys too. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so, you claim I'm insulting. There's no insult there. If you are a mushrik, I'll tell you. Look, even if it is my father, for example, who is a mushrik, I'll tell him. It is not an insult. It is just the truth. People cannot bear the truth. Quran chapter 43 verse 78. We have brought you the truth, but most of you hate the truth. That is what God says. We have brought you the truth, but most of you hate the truth. Quran chapter 43 verse 78. Somebody can help me write it down there. Chapter 43 verse 78. Right? Uh -huh. So me, Baba Shaib, I will tell you the truth to your face. Allazira yuballiguna risalati Allahi ah wa yakhshawnahu la yakhshawna ahada illa Allah Those who deliver the verses uh, the messages of God and fear God will fear no one but God and that is me I don't fear you Wallahi lazim You are a mushrik I'll tell you whether it's in the debate the dialogue face to face I'll tell you if you, you are I'll tell you It's just like somebody acting foolish if it's a fool tell him when Musa, Musa, Musa alayhi salam, when he was telling God in chapter 7, verse 155, what did he say? Will you annihilate us for what the foolish among us have done? Are they not fools when they took the calf? Is it not a foolish act? Is it a wise act? Chapter 2, verse 130. Who will desire other than the creed of Abraham if not one who fools himself? Who will desire other than the creed of Abraham if not one who fools himself? So if you desire Ali Sunnah, you desire Tariqa to Tijaniya, you desire Ahmadiyya, the Akira you are following, other than the creed of Abraham, are you a wise person? Ladies and gentlemen, help me out. According to God, are you a wise person? God says you are fooling yourself. Where is the insult Baba Shaib is doing to you? Let's go. Chapter 2, verse 142. 
It clearly says in that chapter and the verse. Sayakulu sufahahu minan nas ma wallahum anki bilatihim mullati kanu alayha. The foolish among the people will say what has turned them away from their kibla which they used to be or at or upon. So you see here, Quran chapter 2, verse 142, God is now saying, the foolish among the people, <laughs> God who created you is telling you in the Quran. So if Baba Shraim, I see, I can see the foolish ones God is talking about. And I say, look at them. These are the foolish ones. Where is the insult? It's a description. You see, uh -huh. thank you, uh, Sharif Karim. That's the verse there. You see, aha, uh -huh. that's a verse. And uh, David Ismail also put it. That's a verse. People hate the truth. Is that God says, He yeah, I brought you the truth, but most of you hate the truth. So it is not me you are hating. It's the truth God is saying in the Quran you hate. That is why these scholars, because they cannot stand me, they are trying to let Ghanaians hate me by saying I'm insulting the prophet and he's the enemy of Islam. Is that all you can do? Really? Me insulting Islam or I'm here to defend the real Islam? I'm here to kick out all you mushriks out of Islam. Wallahi, you are all mushriks, the mushrikun, the Sunni, the Shia. Wallahi, I'll repeat it. You are all mushriks. Ali Sunnah, Shia, Tijaniya, Ahmadiyya, Sufiya, Wahhabiya. Wallahi, you are all mushriks. Find me for a dialogue. You think I cannot prove that to you? I will show you easily. And tell you to your face. Go and check all the dialogues and debates I've ever done. I will tell you. I'm not scared of you. Are you more scarier than the angel of death? <laughs> uh -huh. So, insulting the people. I don't insult people. I only describe them. Even Moses described them. Chapter 7, verse 155. Even God describes them. Chapter 2, verse 130. Even God himself again describes them, chapter 2, verse 142. You see, it's not an insult. And even the jinns, they admit to having foolish people among them. The jinns, huh? they admitted to having foolish people among them. Huh? So Quran chapter 72, verse 4, the jinns themselves, they admitted to, be, to having foolish people among them. Chapter 72, verse 4. Then he says, Wa annahu kana yakulu, ah, safihuna alallahi shatata. You see, the jinns, they admitted to having foolish foolishness of themselves, to having such thoughts about God. They admitted. It's not an insult, it's a description of what a person has done. A foolish person is somebody who lacks good judgment. So if you lack good judgment and you have been told a fool, you say, we are insulting you. And that it has been our foolishness saying SS about, about God, shatata, to be SS. Right? That, that's what the jeans said. You claim Baba Shraib is insulting you, right? Now, some people will say, oh, why is he calling us mushriks? I call you mushriks because your religion is not from God. The sectarian, sectarian religions you created is not from God. Come, find me for a dialogue and prove to me where he gave you Sunnah, Shia, Tariqa, Tijaniya, where he said you should name yourself such names. I'm waiting. I'm going to open the phone lines so that people can call. Right? So I'm going to show you why I call people mushriks. Quran chapter 41 verse 6. Listen what God asked the messenger to say. Kul. Innama ana basharum mithlukum yuha ilayya annama ilahukum ilahun wahidu. Then he says, Fastakimu ilayhi wastagfiru. Yeah? Then he says, Wailu lil mushrikeen. Woe to the mushriks. They know themselves. Mina lazina farraku di nahum wa kenu shia ad. Kullu hizbun bima ladayhim farhun. Chapter 30, verse 31 to 32. That is chapter 30, verse 31 to 32. You find it in verse 32. Min al-lazina farraku dinahu wa kanu shia'an 
uh, each party rejoicing with what is it has among those who are differentiated their religion and become sects they are the mushriks do not be among the mushriks so quran chapter 41 verse 6 it says and woe to the mushriks so if i don't know the mushriks how can i woe to them god is described he has described the qualities of mushriks in the quran they are those who associate things with god god never gave permission you associate sahih bukhari the prophet has no idea which book is called sahih al-bukhari but you add it to islam if not a foolish mindset you have why will you add garbages the prophet never approved to the islam and you claim you are still a muslim a mushrik like you mushrikan <clears throat> bazakawa you see Hey, salam, showboy, naganka, about showboy, I see you, bro. Aha, uh -huh. you are associating something with God. He never gave you permission. So somebody will say, ah, Baba Shwaib is calling us mushrik. If you are a mushrik, I will tell you. I will not hide from you. I will not, look, I'm not scared of you. Wallahi, I will tell you. <laughs> what if you are a jahil? Can I tell you or not? So it is in chapter 39, verse 64. Chapter 39, verse 64. If you are a jahil, the messenger himself was asked to tell the people jahilun. Kul afa gayri lahi ta'muruni ahbuda abudu ayyuhal jahilun. Is it other than God you instruct me or you command me to serve or to worship, O oh, you, the ignorant ones? That is what the messenger was asked to tell his people. Because they were ignorant. If you are ignorant, why will you tell me to come and worship something else? Uh, wise G, it is Quran chapter 39, verse 64, 64, 64, 64, right? 39, verse 64. Aha. Uh -huh. So, this is what people don't understand. You are ignorant, I have to call you ignorant. You are a mushrik, I have to call you a mushrik. What if you are a kafir? Is it an insult? No, it's not. It's the description of who you are, what you do. So if you are a kafir, I can call you a kafir. And somebody will say, Baba Shwaib, where is the evidence? Go again, chapter 109, verse 1. The messenger was asked to call the disbelievers, Kul, ya ayu al kafirun. Oh, you, the disbelievers, the ungrateful ones. So what mistake has Baba Shwaib done if I should call somebody a mushrik? an ignorant a jahil or a what a kafir it's not an insult you see uh -huh. it is something you have decided to be part of so i'm calling you the name for being that kind of thing if you act foolish you have to be called foolish person right simple <laughs> why is the insult i don't get it Good. Now, the last part is people say, I said, they are, they are refuting my argument. They said, oh, he said there's no Allah wa Akbar in the Quran. This guy doesn't understand. Oh my God, oh my God. The mushriks, what is wrong with their logic? I said, there is no way God instructed you to say Allah wa Akbar. It doesn't exist in the Quran. God asked you to call him Allah wa Akbar. It doesn't exist. Do you have it? Come and find me for a dialogue and prove it. I never said Allah, Allah, uh, like the word Al Akbar is not mentioned. Akbar is there. But understand the context. And I'm going to help you to understand the context today. People don't understand the context of the Quran when words are mentioned. So, for instance, Quran chapter 29, verse 45. After this, then I'll just open the phone lines before I end the program right so quran chapter 29 verse 45 uh let me share the screen so that you you see uh what i'm trying to say uh let me sorry let me share the screen with this one and i share it here yeah so quran chapter 29 verse 45 God says, "Atlu ma uhiya ilayka min al-kitab wa akim salat Inna salata tanha an al-fashahi wal-munkar." Then He says, 
wala zikrullahi akbar wala zikrullahi akbar it is not telling you wala tazkurullah or it is say wa zakarallahu akbar it's not telling you to say allahu akbar or allahu akbar no wala zikrullah this zikr here is a noun that zikr there is a noun lahi name of god is now for people who know idaf ilai or mudaf ilai in the arabic then he says what akbar so now he's telling you the zikr is akbar not god is akbar he's telling you wala zikr lahi akbar so the zikr is the akbar not god for anybody who understand the grammatical aspect of the quran you know what i'm saying god is not asking you to say allahu akbar he's only telling you wala zikr lahu this is zikr lahi this zikr the zikr of god the remembrance of god in your salat is greater not not he's telling you that allahu akbar no you'll be dumb to think he's saying allahu akbar that's why the allahi have kesra it says lahi akbar huh you understand good so wala zikrullahi this zikrullahi it is the zikrullah god is uh, god is now telling us that is akbar but it is not saying allahu akbar as in saying god is akbar you'll be a fool to think that is what the a, a grammatical aspect is telling you do you see how dumb some of the mushriks are <laughs> no wonder they cannot face me in the dialogue i will embarrass you seriously seriously because even the arabic one the arabic language you went to study is not making any sense it's, it doesn't have any benefit it's useless especially those based in the saudi arabia <laughs> and again quran chapter 9 verse 72 quran chapter 9 verse 72 i'm sharing the screen in that verse he says waridwanu waridwanu min allahi akbar so for anybody who understand the grammatical aspect chapter 9 verse 72 it is not telling you allahu akbar understand this clearly i will explain to you why you cannot say that it is not telling you to say allahu akbar it is only telling you the ridwanu the ridwanu hmm? this ridwanu it is the one which god is talking about that being akbar so ridwanun then min allahi you can see that allah has kesra for those who understand arabic you learn something we call rafun then we have jarrun ah uh, then we have nazbun rafun jarrun nazbun that is the fata kesra and dhamma if you understand the grammatical aspect of the quran whenever the word type of signs are used it denotes what is being intended so when it says ridwanun that ridwan represents the akbar mentioned at the end so it is the ridwan min allahi god is saying is akbar it is not god telling you god is akbar are you a fool to think god is saying god is allah akbar Allah we should get God. Stress the cool out of your one. I got you mad. Any scholar who can come out to prove to me where God says you should call it Allahu Akbar in the Quran? Wallahi wallah. I'll give you a thousand euro and from today I'll stop I'll stop being a Muslim. Come and prove to me where God says you should call him Allahu Akbar. So now why can't you call God Allahu Akbar? And I'm going to show you the evidence. When you go to Quran chapter 7 verse 180. Suratul Al-Araf chapter 7 verse 180. It says, "Walillahil asmaul husna fa'aduhu biha wazarul ladhina yulhiduna fi asma'ihi." Then it says, "Sa yujizawna ma kanu ya'malun." So God says, and to God belongs the best names, the beautiful names, the best names, right? Then he says, invoke him by them. You should invoke God, call God with them. So now, among all the best names God, God has in the Quran, it doesn't have Akbar among the, the names. 
So now who gave you that permission to come and stand in Salat and call God Allahu Akbar? Where did he give you that permission? It doesn't exist in the Quran. God never said you should come in the Salat and call him Allahu Akbar. This is not from God. The Sahih Bukhari is commanding you to do that. And you'll be a mushrik to do that. Because Sahih Bukhari is giving you another legislation, another uh, law to follow. So Quran chapter 41, uh, 42 verse uh, 21. Amlahum shuraka u shara'u lahum min ad-din ma lam yazanu bi illa or do they have idols associate partners who have legislated for them of a religion to which god has not authorized do they have such legislations from that idols you formulate things god never gave you so now you are calling god allahu akbar god god says walillahi al-asma'ul husna fa'aduhu biha then he says, Wazarul Lazina Yul Hiduna fi Asmai. So you should leave those who equivocate concerning his names. And who do we see? The mushriks. Those are the ones equivocating with the names of God. They say, Allah Akbar. Where did he give you Allah Akbar? Come and prove to us where he says you should call him Allah Akbar. Right? Come. Mushriks. Aha, so to simplify, for you to understand which are the best names of God in the Quran, you go to Quran chapter 59, verse 23 to verse 24. You will see the best names of God, right? So the best names here, if you go to Surah Al-Hashr, he says what? Huwa Allahu allazi la ilaha illa huwa malikul kuddusun salamun mumin muhaymin. Then he says what? Al-azizul jabbarul mutakabbir. Then he says, Subhanallah, Amma Yushirkun. Who Allah will Khalikul Bariun, eh? Bariun, eh? Musawir. Then he says, Lahul Asmahul Husna. You see the best names? So, Lahu, for to him belongs the best names. Then he says, Yusabbihu Lahu Mafi Samawati Wal Art, Wahu Al Azizul Hakim. Quran chapter 59, verse 23 to verse 24. The best names, for example, are mentioned in this chapter. You see them there. You see. Aha. Uh -huh. So God, God says, call him by them. Quran chapter 7, verse 180. So call him by the, those best names he asked you. So when you go throughout the Quran, chapter 13, verse 9, you will find Al-Kabir. The Kabir is part of the best names of God. Right? Al-Kabir. So the Al-Kabir, when they use it in a superlative form, that is a Sigatul Tafdil, they will call it what? They will say Akbar. That is in a superlative form. Huh? So now when you go to Quran chapter 17, verse 110 to 111, this is what God says. He says, Call him Allah or call him a rahman Then he says, Whichever you call, uh, whichever you call, to him belongs the best names. So we all know what the best names are. Akbar is not part of the best names of God. So then he says, Don't be loud with your salat, nor be silent with it, but seek a means in between. Me. May I just you? Nazwa na kusa kari wa nazwa kaji nazwa yezu e na kari nazwa kuleko nazwa kaji love you aha she said wala tajhar bi salatika wala tukhafid biha wa tagi bayna zalika sabila you seek a means in between a way in between so the best names is what you are supposed to use it doesn't say you should call him allahu akbar it doesn't exist in the quran no it never exists. Any scholar who says Allah Akbar exists where you have to call God Allah Akbar, he should find me for a live dialogue and I'm willing to pay him 1,000 euros for free. Yes. So in verse 111 says, قُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذُ وَلَدًا وَلَمْ يَقُلْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ وَلَمْ يَقُلْ لَهُ وَلِيٌّ مِّنَ الزُّلِّ Then it's ended by saying, وَكَبِّرُهُ تَكْبِيرًا You see? So and then magnify him by what? Kabir. So when you say Allahu Kabir is enough, that's why I say Takbira. You don't say Allahu Akbar. It's wrong. 
That is not the instruction God gave you there. Then he says takbir. So when we say takbir, takbir, that is why the scholars of the hadith, yeah, the hadith he used, the mushriks, they will add the word takbir, the alif there, so that you make it allow. God didn't say you should call him in that instance. He says wakabirhu takbira. The takbir means when you say kabir, Allahu kabir is enough. But out of your foolishness, you make garbage books decide for you what the religion is instead of God teaching you the deed. So Quran chapter 49 verse 16, God is asking you a question. You the mushriks. Are you the ones going to be teaching God your religion? Or is it vice versa? Does God have to rather teach you the religion or you are teaching? Do you see? Aha. Uh -huh. So simply, when I said in the Quran, there is no way God says you should call him Allah or Akbar. The mushriks, they misunderstood me. And then they took it out of context. No, no problem. So, so far, they haven't been able to answer a single question correctly from me. I keep telling you, a single question that I ask the mushriks, they haven't been able to answer a single question correctly. Wallahi. Any scholar among the mushriks, Ghani and Sunkuna Jina, Malamin could not answer question correctly. Wallahi, if any many dialogue now about a thousand euro free of charge. Wallahi, you don't have any scholar in Ghana who can answer my question correctly in Ghana. Wallahi, and if they are man enough, let them find me for a dialogue and see the embarrassment. I will set them up as a scapegoat. Wallahi, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me see. I'm about to bring this to an end. So, uh, I can give you like some few minutes. You can call before I end the program, inshallah. So, so the number is... Yes, so based on what I've spoken about today, let me see. The network interrupted a lot, so I couldn't focus much uh, to to give the point, to deliver the points uh, on, on time. Anyways, I talked about the people calling me Qurani Yun, then the Mushriks say I'm um, uh, the enemy of Islam, then 2,000 years Christians worship Jesus, insulting the Prophet, insulting the people. Then Allah Akbar. So I tackle six questions and issues uh, related to all this. Uh -huh. So the phone lines is there. That's a number there. You can call me via WhatsApp. And anything you have to ask must be based on what I've said. I only have less than 10 minutes and I'm um, ending. So if you have any question, you can call now. Let's uh, answer the question before I go, inshallah. Or you can leave down a message in the comment section. I'll check and answer you. Inshallah. Yeah. Yes, the phone line is there. So, aha, uh, brother Abdurrahman Idris, yes, you asked me for concerning the teachings uh, between God and the messenger. Yes, I have to do that in the next topic, inshallah. In my nice program, I'll be addressing that point. I made a folder down. Uh, actually, I, I wasn't able to fit it in my schedule today. I'll do that, inshallah. You, you'll see that uh, video next week, inshallah. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, the time is taking. If anybody has a question, uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, the time is taking. If anybody has a question, uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, the time is taking. If anybody has a question,
Uh huh. Uh, why is Jesus if Ramadan is 28 or 30? Ramadan has to be done in a, in a month time, in a month, and it doesn't have fixed day because it's a month, so it's based on the, the sighting of the washahar, the, the, the moon, the crescent. So the crescent is supposed to be used for calculating time. Quran chapter 2, verse 189, right? So you use the, the, the waxing crescent, the waxing crescent. That is what you use to start, to start counting. So when you are using the crescent, it is from the time you have seen the crescent. And so God says in Quran chapter 2, verse 185, whoever witnessed the shah, right? And the shah can be witnessed by the new moon. That is to pinpoint the time, right? So the shah, when you witness it, then you can do the fasting. You can do the abstinence, siyam, right? Then it can end on the last day when you find the waning crescent as well, right? That is to mark the time. So it's not a fixed number. Yes, uh, doing tayya in the Quran and the salat is useless. It's, it's an act of shirk. Tayya means greeting, right? It means greeting. So when you are greeting, who are you greeting? The prophet in your salat. God never gave you that garbage. It's not coming from God. God never asked you to do anything called tayya in the Quran. No scholar on earth can show one verse where it says tayya. It doesn't exist. The tayya was from the hadith and the mushriks gave you. They say, tayya to lillahi. You are talking to God and you are talking to the prophet at the same time, unless you are out of coverage area. So God says, And that is evidence. It means you are fooling yourselves when you do such things because it's not coming from God. Right? So ladies and gentlemen, if there is no question for today, I will have to end the program. I have to attend to the kids. Uh, and unfortunately, the network acted bad for me today. So uh a lot of the the times went for waste and i'll try to to find a better you know way to fix the issue i have to contact the uh, internet provider in order to fix this issue inshallah uh everything happens for a reason and inshallah this problem problem will be resolved so thank you very much ladies and gentlemen and also uh, i have my that's my uh youtube uh page this is where I usually put up all my lectures, my videos. Uh, if you want to benefit from the lectures I do, I have the videos there where you can watch it and benefit for yourself, right? Uh -huh. So you can learn for yourself and know what the religion is about. Uh, Somebody is asking a question. He says, what do you do? What do you do after Salat? That's sitting. As soon as I finish from the prostration, I only say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa akhir da'wahum an alhamdulillah Rabbil Right? Because your salat is encompassing the dua to call on God, to invoke on God. Quran chapter 2 verse 110. Eh, sorry. Quran chapter 17 verse 110. It consists of dua. Adu'u. You are calling God. So at the end, I only say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Then I'm done. My salat. There is nothing like salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Salam is not from God. It's from the mushriks. So be, be careful. Yeah, thank you very much. Baba uh, Greetings, Kofi Kofi. Unfortunately, I'm ending now. You just came late. And I'm getting exhausted. I have to eat. And I have to get my water. You see, my water is finished. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. And I'm trying to schedule a dialogue with one guy based in Saudi Arabia. He said he's giving me responses, but everything he did so far is, is, is out of coverage area, right? Everything he did is out of coverage area. Everything, everything he did is out of coverage area. So let me see if I can play one of his videos to, to show some of the funny things he did. Uh, <clears throat> oh, oh, where is it? Let me just find it uh, <clears throat> to play one of these videos he said he wants to have a dialogue with me and i'm going to set him up as a scapegoat because i've done it before especially people who are based in saudi arabia <laughs> i've done that to them before so i'll set him up as a scapegoat <laughs> no doubt right no doubt so <clears throat> let me to play the video so that you see
I hope this video will play before I end. Let me try to play. Uh, it's loading, it's loading, it's loading. It's loading. It's loading. It's loading. Uh, it's, it's still not coming. But anyways, uh, let me see. Uh -huh, okay, I can play it on my phone before I end. Let me play it from here. So that people will see the guy who wants to have a dialogue with me. And then to know how messed up they are. The sectarians, they are so messed up. Right? Uh huh. Now listen to what he said. Allah said in the Quran that um, mentioning Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you know, multiple times in the Quran. Uh, let me see. Then he also said that is it clear enough? Allah is referring to the Mishikin, just like him, those who were in, in Kaaba, worshipping idols other than Allah. And Allah said, When we go to the masjid to pray, what we do, we don't say anything other than to mention Allah alone in, the, in our salah. So nobody is mentioning anything. And mentioning the Prophet Wasallam's name is what is part of the salah. Oh, he said mentioning the name of the prophet is part of the salat. So it is in the Quran. That's what he said. Nowhere did God ever ask you to mention the name of Prophet Muhammad in your salat. Wallah, he doesn't exist in the Quran. And somebody is asking a question. Uh, let me see. Is it uh, David Ismail? He says, celebrating the birthday uh, of the prophet, is it accepted in Islam? I don't see any problem with it. If you are celebrating somebody's birthday, it's never haram, right? Let's say me, Shaib Abdullah, I'm celebrating my birthday. You come to our, my house and we celebrate it together. There's nothing wrong with it, right? If somebody claims they are celebrating the uh, birthday of the prophet, unless you don't involve idol worship, fine, then it's okay. If you involve idol worship, then it becomes a problem. So I don't see any problem. God never said it's haram. Quran chapter 16, verse 116. You have to be careful with what you invent with your mouth saying this is halal, this is haram in order to fabricate lies about God. It's dangerous. So if God never said it's haram, it's not haram. If never said, uh, hey, this, don't do this, don't, do, don't, don't put it there. So I don't see any haram in that so far as you don't involve idol worship. Right? <clears throat> uh, Abu Bakr Muhammad Tijani says, that guy is my brother. Okay, the video I played, he said his name is Muhammad Bash, right? And he said he gave me a response. So I said, okay, we have to have a dialogue. Now, I have some of his videos. He contradicted himself a lot, right? <laughs> and then if we have the dialogue, you guys will understand what is going on. You understand? Sectarians have been brainwashed. All I want to do is to help them to wake up, right? That's all I want you to do. I'm not here to say I'm better than your scholars. So Ghanaians, don't misunderstand me, please. So ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, where I end the topic for today. Subhana Rabbi Izzati Amma Yisifun. Wassalamu ala al-Mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Peace be upon you all. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is where I end. we we'll see you again next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.